Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at this pair of Arduino powered wireless transceivers. So I got these from this hacker box and I just did a video on this a few days ago. It's the sub gigahertz collection from hacker boxes and basically it comes with a bunch of items related to sub gigahertz radio. And one of the items that it came with was this pair of wireless transceivers. So what exactly is it that you can do with a pair of wireless transceivers like this? Well, like the name suggests, transceiver means that you can transmit or receive. And so that means we can stream data or we can communicate wirelessly between these two devices. Now, in this case, the transceiver isn't capable of transmitting and receiving at the same time. It has to do one or the other, but it can be programmed to switch between those two different modes. So you can kind of think of it like a walkie talkie, like uh, you can't talk while you're listening, um, but when you press the button, you can start talking and transmitting. And then when you release the button, you can receive. Uh, that's exactly how these work and they both behave that way. So you can have this one go into transmit mode for a while and send some data. And as long as this one's not transmitting, it'll pick it up and vice versa. So one of the things that's really cool about these particular transceivers is that they have this built-in Arduino Pro Micro. And the Arduino Pro Micro, aside from just being easy to program because Arduino is incredibly easy, these particular ones have two UART interfaces. And this means that we can communicate with two other devices over UART and also communicate with this wireless module. And one of the UART interfaces is over this USB or this micro USB port. So you could plug this into your computer using a micro USB cable and open up a terminal to establish serial communication with the Arduino. And then you can either stream data from one of these to that terminal on your computer or stream data from that terminal out to the other one. And if you had these plugged into two different computers, or maybe a Raspberry Pi and a computer, for instance, you could stream data between them. You can basically communicate between them. And I don't just mean in a terminal, it's serial data. You can basically re relay that to any program. And beyond just the ability to communicate with things over UART like that, it's an Arduino. So you can program this to use these different GPIO pins to do other things without having to rely on any other device. Like maybe you can attach a button to one of these GPIO pins so that when you press it, it sends some data using this wireless module. And you can connect the other one, for instance, to an LED. So maybe you press a button over here on this one and an LED lights up on this one. Now, obviously, buttons and LEDs are just examples here. This could be connected to a sensor. Maybe you have a weather monitor somewhere outside and you want to stream readings from that sensor to another device or, you know, to a computer inside. You can use modules like these to do exactly that. And I've tested these a little bit already around the house. It seems like I can get about twice the range that I can get from my home Wi-Fi router. Now, obviously, these don't communicate with my Wi-Fi router because they're on a different frequency, but they communicate with each other at about twice the range of my Wi-Fi. Uh, I think the reason that they have such good range is because they're a lower frequency. So these are 433 megahertz, whereas Wi-Fi and Bluetooth operate in the 2.4 or 5 gigahertz range. Um, and, you know, higher frequencies are impeded more by structures like the walls in your house, and they just tend to not have as good range. So this being a lower frequency is probably how it gets that better range. I don't think that the bandwidth is going to be as good. Um, the test that I did, I can just using Arduino code, I'm not sure where the limiting factor is, if it's the Arduino communication over SPI or if it's actually this transceiver module, um, I got about uh, three kilobytes a second bandwidth of wireless communication between these two. So that's pretty good. I mean, you can stream a lot of data over you know, three kilobytes a second. Um, it's definitely not bad. Anyway, I've got this Arduino IDE opened up in the background here, 
and I wanted to just kind of go over the Arduino code that I'm using to communicate between these two devices. So this is the program that I'm using to send the data. I've named it CC1101SEND. Um, the CC1101 is because that's the transceiver module. That's actually the name of that tiny little IC chip right there in the middle of the circuit board. So that's the chip that's responsible for doing this wireless transmission. And I'm communicating with that chip using a library called ELECHOUSE CC1101. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to that library. And basically, you just download the code, unzip it, put it into your Arduino libraries folder, and then you can include it into your projects like this. I can show you what that library looks like first. So here I've got Visual Studio Code open, and I'm just looking at the source code for this ELECHOUSE library. One thing I did have to change is I had to change this wprogram.h header to be arduino.h. Um, I'm not sure what this was designed to work with, why it's called wprogram, um, but changing that fixed everything. So you might have to do that too. Uh, there's a bunch of constants here. Uh, most of these are irrelevant to me because they're lower level details about this specific CC1101 chip. If you wanted to really get in and like tweak things and maybe change the different radio uh, mode or change the frequencies and stuff, you would need to learn what all these do and try to figure out how to send that data over SPI. But if you want to use it in its default mode, which is all I'm interested in right now, uh, here is the public interface. So these are all the private methods that are used um, internally in this library. And these are the public methods that we have access to in our code. So the interface is pretty simple. Um, you've got this init method. So this is going to initialize um, this whole module. You've got this send data method, which guess what? It sends some data. You pass it uh, a pointer to a byte array, and you pass it the length of data, the number of bytes, and it'll send it over the radio module. Next, you have this set receive method, and this will put the module into receive mode. So remember I said that you can't send and receive at the same time. You have to go into receive mode, and then it's capable of receiving. By default, it's in the send mode. So it's kind of like the opposite of a walkie-talkie. So right, like a walkie-talkie by default, when you're not pressing the button, is in receive mode, and you're hearing all of the data being sent. Then you press the button, and it goes into the send mode. It's the opposite in this case. Um, by default, it's sending, and then um, you set it into a special mode using this method, and now you can receive. So when you're in receive mode, there's this other method that returns, um, they have it as a byte. It's, it behaves as a Boolean, so it's going to be either true or false. And this method is called check receive flag. So if this returns true, then data has been received. If it returns false, then no data has been received. And finally, we have this receive data method. Uh, so it takes a pointer to a byte buffer, so a byte array, and it returns the number of bytes that were received. It fills that byte array with the data that's being received. So armed with this knowledge, um, just these five methods from this library, we can do everything we need to do with these modules to send and receive data between them. So let's jump over to the Arduino IDE and take a look at that code. So first I'll look at the send code. Um, the first thing I'm doing here, I'm just including the library that we just looked at. I'm defining a value named size, and this is going to be my buffer size. Um, I've already experimented with this a little bit, and this module seems to have problems sending data larger than 60 bytes at a time. 
I'm not sure if that's in the implementation of this library or um, maybe I just need to add more delay between sending. But when I did a test to see just how much data can I push through this thing, um, that's how I determined it's about three kilobytes a second. I found that sending buffers, like sending chunks of data larger than 60, tended to lose a lot of data. So not all of it was being received. If I send chunks of 60 or less, all of the data was received in the short range test that I was doing. So I'm just going to keep using 60 until I do a little bit more research and figure out why that's the case or figure out what an optimal buffer size in this case is. It's not a problem that it's limited to 60. In fact, it's kind of common to have small buffers for radio applications like this because you can just, you know, buffer the data. So if you want to send something larger than 60, you break it up and send chunks of 60 at a time until you've gone through all of the data. Next, we're allocating the buffer. So this is creating this actual byte array of size 60, and uh, it's called buffer. So here in the Arduino setup function, we're just calling that init method from the elechhouse library. So that's going to establish our communication with this wireless module over SPI. And then down here, we get to our main loop. If you're familiar with Arduino, you know that this loop function just gets called repeatedly throughout your program. So anything you put in this function is going to be called over and over and over. So the function in this case will be to declare a variable named lin that equals 60. I'm using this as a temporary variable to denote the length of data that I'm about to send. Um, in this example, I'm sending the entire buffer size. Uh, but you can change this to be smaller than 60 and send you know, less than 60. And that's fine because your buffer is big enough to hold that. You can't make this bigger than 60 that would actually be a buffer overflow because we'd be writing beyond what we've allocated up here. Uh, and then we're just iterating uh, over the entire buffer range for this length. So from zero less than this length. And we're setting each of those bytes in the buffer to be a random value between 33 and 126. So less than 127 because it's not inclusive. And that's the range of basically visible characters in ASCII code. So all of the alphabet and punctuation and numbers and stuff. You're not limited to sending that. You can send any binary data you want. You can send, you know, 0 through 255. But I'm sending visible data because it's easier to debug. I can print it out in the serial console and actually see what's being sent. Whereas if I send binary data, I'd have to convert it to hex or something, and it's just kind of a pain to deal with. So I'm limiting to visible characters just for convenience. So after it's filled the buffer, 60 character buffer, um, we just call this send data method. We pass it the buffer, and we pass it the length of the buffer, the length of the data that we're sending. In this case, 60 bytes. And that's it. This is all it takes to send data. So I'm going to plug in one of these Arduinos into my USB port. And it looks like it's on TTY ACM0. You can see I've got Arduino set up um, to work with the Pro Micro. It's a 3.3 volt 8 megahertz pro micro that is important you don't want to load you don't want to send it using the wrong board parameters you can actually brick these pro micros and then i just hit upload so you can see it's uploading and upload is done so now i can remove this arduino so i've got this one preloaded and in case you didn't realize what was happening in this program Every single time the main loop is called, so just repeatedly, over and over, we're sending packets of 60 random bytes, basically 60 um, characters of text, over and over and over. So now, 
I'm going to write some code, or I've already written it, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to receive this data. So here's a program that I've called CC1101Receive. And similarly, it includes the Elekhouse library, allocates a buffer, but this one in the setup, I'm initializing the serial connection. So I'm setting the baud rate because that's what I have our, the Arduino IDE configured to right now. And basically this will let me open up the Arduino um, serial monitor. I have to plug the Arduino in. Anyway, I'll be able to open up the serial monitor and actually see what this Arduino is printing out to that console. And that's why I've chosen to use visible characters on this one. So I can watch them stream in real time. Uh, then you call that init method to initialize the connection to the wireless module. And then that set receive method because we have to tell this module to go into receive mode. And that's all there is for the setup. Now if we go down to this main loop, which again gets called over and over, you can see that all of it basically is contained within this condition. And that condition is to check the receive flag. So when the main loop is called, if no data has been received, the loop doesn't do anything because it's all part of this condition. So it'll go back around, and then if no data is received, it'll go back around, and it'll do that forever until data is received. So when the module has received data, this will be true, and this condition will happen. And all we'll do here is call that receive data method, pass in the buffer that we defined up here, and it returns the length of data that was received. So we'll use that to iterate over that many characters. Um, this is a buffer. The buffer is an array of bytes, but I'm casting them to characters so that the serial.print method prints them as visible characters instead of uh, byte integers. So this is going to turn them into whatever the character uh, that character code represents is. So we'll be able to see the data in a more compact way. So it loops over every single one of the characters in the received data and prints it to the serial console. And then it prints a new line just so that every um, packet of received data, every update, right, is on its own line. And we can look at every single line that gets received, representing every single packet of data being received. Now, after you receive, the device actually goes back into transmit mode, and you have to tell it to go back into receive mode so that you can loop back around and check to see if it's received any data again. And it just does that forever. So in case you didn't catch what's happening here, we're just waiting for data to be received and printing it out to the serial console. So now I'm going to plug this one into my computer. Make sure we're on the right port and upload the data or upload the code. So now it's done uploading and I'm just going to let this go. Now I can open up the serial monitor and there's nothing happening on the serial monitor right now because the sending Arduino isn't powered. But I've got this power bank here that I'm going to plug into this Arduino so it's going to boot up. And as soon as I plug this in, you should see data start to stream. There you go. Uh, you can see it's streaming pretty quickly, too. Um, if I take off this auto scroll so that it doesn't scroll down with it. Uh, you can see there's a timestamp on the left because I have that enabled on the serial console. And so starting here, the second is um, 34. And you can see all of these updates were happening in the same second all the way until down there. So 
since each update is 60 bytes, it's actually streaming pretty fast. And you could stream a lot of data at this rate. So yeah, I think these things are really neat. Um, the next time I have a project where I need to stream some data um, at a little bit longer range than Wi-Fi, just kind of around the house, I think I'll give these a try and see how it works in real life instead of just in a practice case like this. So anyway, that's it for this video. I just thought I'd show you how these things work since I brought them up in the Hacker Boxes video but didn't really go into any detail. Um, I'll definitely use them in a future video. I just need to wait until a project comes along where this is like a good radio application. I think it'd be a lot of fun just to see what type of data I can stream. Um, maybe audio, since three kilobytes should be enough for audio data. That would be an interesting little example. But yeah, you'll see these things again in a future video. I'll go ahead and end this video with some footage of me soldering these together. It was a pretty easy solder job. They're all just, you know, through hole headers that you have to solder together. And uh, yeah, I'll leave you with that. But until next time, bye.